Study problem 8-23, a classic example of gene interactions. One of the earliest examples of gene interactions was found by the British geneticists Bateson and Punnett more than a century ago. They noticed that different pure breeds of chickens have different shaped combs, which they referred to as single, rose, and pea. You can see these phenotypes in this picture from Bateson's book Mendel's Principles of Heredity, published in 1913. When pure breeds of chickens with a rose comb were crossed to pure breeds with a pea comb, all of the F1 chickens had a different shaped comb, which they referred to as walnut. The F1 walnut comb chickens were mated among themselves to produce an F2 generation. Let's diagram this cross. Rose is crossed with pea, and all of the F1 are walnut. When these walnut F1 chickens were mated among themselves, the F2 had 113 walnut, 39 P, 36 rose, and 12 of an altogether different phenotype called single. Using these data, let's work through the questions below, which are problems 823 in the book. First, what is the evidence that these phenotypes are due to the interactions of two genes rather than to multiple alleles at a single locus? And second, Explain how these phenotypic ratios arose by representing the genotypes responsible for each phenotype. So let's think about whether this is one gene or two genes. Since pea comb and rose comb are true breeding traits, my immediate assumption is that pea comb and rose comb are both homozygotes for some allele or for some gene, and that walnut comb is the heterozygote between them. Let's write this out as if it were one gene or if it is two genes. One thing we notice is that we have four phenotypes here. The F2 includes single comb, which did not appear in previous generations, suggesting there is also a genotype that was not present in the previous generation. Let's write it. If it is one gene, we can write it like this. If it is two genes, one parent could be like this, which we will call P. The other parent could be like this, which we will call rose. We could make either gene designated for the phenotype, but the important thing is that the two parents were homozygous dominant for one and homozygous recessive for the other. So in each case, there would be true breeding, but they would be homozygous for different genes, and the F1 would be heterozygous for both. So in either case, one or two genes, we can get the phenotype seen in the F1 generation. But it is the F2 generation that we need to look at in each case. If it is one gene, we will see this outcome in the F2. But there are only three possible phenotypes. In this case, with two genes, we would expect 9 16 to have a dominant allele for each of the genes, and we would say that is walnut. We would expect 3 16 to be homozygous recessive for one gene and have the dominant allele for the other. We said that one was P and this one is rose. Then we have one sixteenth that is homozygous recessive for both genes. That would give us an additional genotype that we have not seen before, and that would be the single phenotype. I think this is going to be two genes. Here is the most likely scenario. It is two genes, with P homozygous recessive for one and homozygous dominant for the other. Rose is homozygous dominant for one and homozygous recessive for the other. Walnut has one dominant allele for each gene, and single is homozygous recessive for both. This fits the ratio. Now let's move to the next part, C. Part C. In order to prove their hypothesis about the genotypes giving rise to each phenotype, Punnett and Bateson crossed each of the original breeds, one with pea comb and one with rose comb, to a breed with a single comb. What was their strategy in performing this cross, and what would be the expected outcome? These are both test crosses, since single comb chickens have the genotype little a, little a, little b, little b, and therefore homozygous recessive. When the original pea comb variety, big A, big A, little b, little b, is crossed to a single comb variety, all of the F1 will be big A, little a, little b, little b, which is pea comb. When the original rose comb variety, little a, little a, big B, big B, is crossed to a single comb variety, all the F1 will be little a, little a, big B, little b, which is rose comb. Here is a more challenging question.
Bateson and Punnett also took individual chickens with a walnut comb from the F2 generation and crossed them to a breed with a single comb. What proportion of these crosses involving a single walnut comb chicken will give all four phenotypes in the offspring? This question's a bit different. Bateson and Punnett took single F2 chickens with walnut combs and crossed them to a single comb variety, so they test crossed them. But these F2 walnut comb chickens will have different genotypes, as shown here. To have a walnut-shaped comb, they need to have a dominant allele for each gene, but they could be homozygous or heterozygous. The offspring that do not have dominant alleles are then grayed out. Nine different genotypes will have the dominant allele for both genes. In order for the test cross of a walnut comb chicken to a single comb chicken to produce all four phenotypes, the walnut comb chicken must have the genotype big A, little a, big B, little b. What fraction of the walnut comb chickens are heterozygous like this? Here are the nine genotypes that will produce a chicken with a walnut comb among the F2 generation. Of these nine, Four of them are heterozygous for both genes, as shown in blue. So four-ninths of the walnut comb chickens will give all four phenotypes when they are test-crossed to chickens with a single comb.